lesson 13 tonight. Thank you for our prayer service. Many, many needs. Aren't you glad you're not God? I mean, we just have hundreds of requests just out of our little group. Just think of the billions of requests worldwide. Okay, uh, let's turn uh, to Nehemiah chapter 8. We left off a couple of weeks ago because we had Thanksgiving last last week. <clears throat> and uh, let's review lesson 12. We started in chapter 8, verse 1. And we saw six things there. And uh, after they were, were trying to recover and rebuild the, the wall, the town, they finally come across the Word of God. And uh, in the book of Ezra covers all that. And so they uh, find out about the book that they did not understand after their captivity. And uh, so we titled last week's, or the last lesson, number 12, chapter 8, verse 1 to 12, Understanding the Book of God. We titled that because that's exactly what they had to do all over again. Think of all the backslidden Christians mostly in America and in Europe, that know nothing about the Bible. Right. And they print a new one, so maybe somebody will read that one, and they won't read that one. And they print another one, and God's people still won't read that book or understand that book. They, they trust what man says on TV, radio, or other books besides the book. So we saw they were in unity in verse 1, chapter 8, verse 1, and then we started outlining these next uh, 11 verses. So we saw in verse 1 and 2 the bringing of the book as they brought the book to the people. And then secondly we saw in verse 3 and 4 the reading of the book so they could actually hear the word of God. And then thirdly we said verse 5 and 6 we saw the respect of the book as they all stood and they all listened to those on the platform called the pulpit. So the bringing of the book, the reading of the book, the respect of the book, and then number four, which is verse seven and eight, was the understanding of the book. And that's when they started getting tearful and mourning over their sin. They really didn't realize how sinful they were before God until they heard it for themselves from the book of God. And then uh, number five, verse nine and 10, we call the joy of the book. When they said, you, you, quit, you ought to be glad you know where you stand with the Lord and now let's get busy and do God's work. And it brought great joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. We got that song from that passage in verse nine and 10 of chapter eight of Nehemiah. And then lastly, we said in verse 11 and 12, number six, you see, the motivation of the book is they went out and they took portions for other people and they got back in gear to do the Christian work that they quit doing. And uh, they went into captivity because they quit, quit serving the Lord. And God says, well, if you don't want to serve me, then you're not going to have any fun. I'm going to put you in a closet for 70 years. And, and Egypt was 400 years, you know. And so we saw that that uh, we need to always be motivated by the book of God to, to do the work of God. We left off in verse 12. So let's pray. Lord, we ask you now to help us finish out chapter 8, verse 13 to the end. And there's still a lot to learn in this, this chapter 8. There's so much in this book. So help us now to absorb some more of the word of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Be seated. So, understanding the book of God was last week, and this week it is remember the Feast of the Booze. The Feast of Tabernacles we pick up here as we go to uh, verse number uh, 13. Verse 12 says they 
all the people went their way to eat, to drink, and to send portions, and to make great mirth, happiness, because they had understood the words that were declared unto them. Now, that was day one. I will tell you that there was day one in reading of the law. Now on day two, we see a, a different story here. Now that they understand the word of God and the work of God, uh, they have also forgotten some very major things in their history as Jews. How many Jews are here tonight? Zero. How many Gentiles are here tonight? Well, physically speaking, the Jews are Hebrews, descendants, physically, and we're not, all right? We may have some in our way back yonder, crossovers, you know, as they search ancestries, but as far as you know, you're not a physical Hebrew, Israelite. Amen. Amen. But we have a lot of New Testament bro broadcasting programming trying to get Christians to go back to old uh, rituals of Israel that was for Israel alone. And then, I mean, if you want to do uh, these feasts and celebrations and Passovers and all, if they want to do that, well, go ahead and do that. You're free to do that. But the New Testament requires none of that. And a lot of those rituals will tie churches up and Christians up into these little religious r ritual balls, relics, and, and you know, we're free. We're free to serve the Lord. And so we shouldn't get caught up in following the Jews, all right? That's, that's the Old Testament. We are children of the New Testament. And uh, that's why we try to win Jews to, the, to Christ so they'll get out and come out of that formalism and religion and, and empty rites that, that don't save people. So we pick up in uh, verse 13. This is the second day event, I call it. And it's a leaders meeting. And uh, look at verse number 13. And on the second day were gathered together the chief of the fathers. So this is a leadership meeting. They gathered together the chief of the fathers of all the people and priests and the Levites unto Ezra the scribe, even to understand the words of the law. Now this is not just everybody from everywhere. This is a leadership meeting on day two. And so we see a few things here, seven distinct things in these few verses. It's kind of loaded up with some good stuff. So we see here in verse 14, the study of the booths revived. Booth, B-O-O-T-H, verse 14, as we read, and they found written in the law which the Lord had commanded by Moses that the children of Israel should dwell in what? Booths. It doesn't say tents, okay? It's not talking about canvas tents. In the feast of the seventh month, which would be October. Actually, uh, they just had this feast of, on the, uh, it's called Sukkot, S-U-K-K-O-T is a Hebrew word for the feast of tabernacles, Sukkot. And uh, this year, because it changes in a lunar change of the calendar, and uh, on the seventh month, though, it was on my birthday. I didn't know that it was uh, October the 2nd. It started and it ended on the 9th of October, seven days, all right? That was this year, 2020. Last year it was a different time, but it was in that seventh month because what's the first month on the Hebrew calendar? What is it? April, right? Remember Passover? Passover day, 14th, isn't it? Anyway, so you go from, you, if you count from April back to October, you'll have seven months. And they have a week of this. So it was on the uh, 2nd of October to the 9th of October this past couple of months. So we have the study of the booze revived. Now, we may get from this story, we may get Brush Arbor meetings under, you know what I'm saying? 
When's the last time you went to a Brush Harbor meeting, right? Revival, yeah. And it's covered with tree limbs and all that. And uh, let's go to Leviticus real quick. This is where it started. And this is to remind them when God delivered them out of Egypt. So we have the 23rd chapter of uh, Leviticus, 23 verse 34. <clears throat> and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Leviticus 23, 34, The Lord says, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of this, this seventh month shall be the feast. It doesn't say every fifteenth of every year. So this, it says, This seventh month shall be the feast of the tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. And the first day shall be in holy convocation holiness first day you shall do no servile work therein so it's, it's like a preparation day let's get the right attitude before we start building anything seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the lord on the eighth day shall be in holy so the first day and the eighth day are holy days one going in one coming out shall be in holy convocation unto you you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is a solemn assembly, and you shall do no servile work therein. These are the feasts of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, to offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, a burnt offering and a meat offering, a sacrifice and drink offering, uh, offerings, everything upon his day. In other words, each day they will be doing something. Beside the Sabbaths of the Lord and beside your gifts, beside all your vows and beside all your free will offerings, which ye uh, give unto the Lord, also in the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on that eighth day shall be a Sabbath. Now, Sunday is, in our calendar is called the eighth day, is it not? And uh, that's when Jesus rose from the dead, the first day of the week, which is still the eighth day of the end of that week. And uh, so anyway, the eighth day is, is just a curious thing here. You shall take you on the first day of the boughs of goodly trees. So now here's, where's, it's, this is your building material. Take you on the first day of the, the boughs of goodly trees, branches of palm trees and of the boughs of thick trees and willows of the brook, and you shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. It's a, it's a happy time, right? It's a feast. It's not really sackcloth and ashes. You shall keep it a, a feast unto the Lord seven days in the year. It shall be a statue forever in your generations. This is for Israel. This is not for all the Christians to come. You shall celebrate it in the seventh month. You shall dwell in booths seven days. All that are Israelites born shall dwell. Israelites, Israelites, okay? Uh, shall dwell in booths. That your generations may know, and there's the reason, your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. And Moses declared unto the children of Israel the feast of the Lord. So that's why they, they have to go back. They, they have missed something for, hey, get this. They have missed this thing for almost a thousand years. And I'll t tell you more about that. So let's go back to Nehemiah. So first, in verse 14 and 15a, we see the study of the booths is, is revived. And now, they found written in the law of Moses, uh, the Lord had commanded by Moses that the children of Israel should dwell in booths in the feast of the seventh day, and that they should publish and proclaim in all their cities and Jerusalem, all right? So that's the proclamation or the study of the booze is being revived. Secondly, picking up 15b, we see 
not only the study of the booths revived, but we see the building of the booths. Physical building is revived also in verse 15b and 16a. And so it says, uh, saying, Go forth unto the mount and fetch olive branches, pine branches, and myrtle branches, and palm branches, and branches of thick trees to make booths as it is written. So the people went forth and brought them and made themselves booths. Okay? And so uh, the Feast of Tabernacles. We have the study of the booths and then we see, secondly, the building, actual building of this uh, booth. Now, you know, they can do this. They have not been able to really do this for almost a thousand years because now they're not in the desert now they're not at war now they can i mean they're under jurisdiction you know of other kings but nehemiah says we can do this hey we haven't physically done this looking back at 1451 bc when it was pronounced uh, in, the, in the in the law and now we're at 445 B.C., so that's just about a thousand years. As one writer said, it's not that they didn't observe it, but they never built booths for a thousand years as, a, as, as, a, as their, all their people. So nobody knew really what to do. They, they didn't do it every year. They're supposed to do it every year, but they didn't. And we'll say something about that. So the study, and then secondly, the building in verse 15b to 16a. Thirdly, we see here in 16b, verse 16b of chapter 8 of Nehemiah, the location, the locations of the booths that are being revived. There's, uh, so God says, I want you to have some freedom in this as families, but I want you to do it. I want you to do it. And so it says, <clears throat> everyone upon the roof of his house 16b everyone everyone i want everybody in on this sort of like the lord's supper jesus said drink ye all of it and, you know it should be when there's something the church the whole church should do it the whole nation of israel should do it and so we have everyone upon the roof of his house so you can put a booth on your house and in their courts, so you can put it outside in the yard. And in the courts of the house of God, put it out there near the temple or the tabernacle. And in the street of the water gate, put it down there. And in the street of the gate of Ephraim, put it down there. So we have locations. They, they weren't uh, necessarily pushed into putting it here and putting it there. They had, they had some freedom where they were located to have these booths. The object is, let's build this remembrance booth of what God has done for us. So we see the locations of the booths revived. Now, uh, 17, uh, let's look at 17, A and B, because there's three parts there. Number four, so we see the physical unity of the booths revived now. As the people come together to do what they're supposed to do, which they haven't done. And uh, so the physical unity of the booths are revived. Verse 17, And all the congregation of them that were come again out of the captivity made booths, all of them, and sat under the booths for since the days of who? Joshua, Jeshua, the son of Nun, unto that day had not the children of Israel done so. So we see here that there's physical unity uh, of the booze being revived. So they observed, they said, because Israel had been scattered and fighting each other and the Judah versus Israel and all the chaos. You know, that's all we have to do. That's all we can have if we don't serve God His way is just chaos. Right. We'll get nothing done unless we just do what God says. Amen. When you, 
and people in the, in the camera, are you in there tonight? I see you. Don't duck. If you do what God says, your life will straighten out. Right. Did that make you mad? It used to make me mad until I started doing it. And now I've been a successful, happy Christian for 46 years. No more hangovers. I told a guy the other day, you know, it's been 46 years since I had a miserable Monday morning hangover. I said, I have no desire to ever live like that again. Amen. I said, uh, so, but if you live for the Lord, he, he can heal your problems. You really don't need that, that many pills, you know, right. and uh, smoke and all the rest of it. So we have a physical unity of the booze revived. Now, it's not popular to go to church today. I don't know anybody, maybe one or two families on this two blocks that they go to a church. Why? It's popular not to go. It's popular not to get married. It's popular to drink alcohol. Now it's popular to smoke pot legally. It's the popularity. And that's why Jesus said that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination unto God. Amen. Luke 16, 15. So maybe they did not build these booths all that time because it became fashionable not to. And if you did, then maybe you were an oddball made fun of. You Bible thumper. You a holy roller. So we see the study, the building, the locations, and now the unity, physical unity of the booths. Number, uh, number five, I think this is. We see verse 17, one little strip there. The joy and satisfaction of the booths being revived. The joy that comes from doing what God said God's way. It brings happiness. Look what verse 17 says. One little strip sentence here. And read it with me. And there was very great gladness. When they got unity and they did what God said to, together, then God makes our heart happy. And we feel satisfied we have done what God wants us to do. Yeah. And there was not gladness. There was very great gladness. Right. Bang, 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 right? Very great gladness. And so I'm glad we're here on Wednesday night. And I'm glad we're here Sunday morning, Sunday night. I'm glad during the week we're all doing what we can to try to reach the world for Christ. Because it brings very great gladness. It doesn't just make us happy, it makes us fulfilled. It says, God is using us. God is using me. Now, if you have no direction, just do what they did, and then you'll have very great gladness. Right? People in the little box there. Now, lastly already, so we see the joy and satisfaction of the booze being revived. And then verse 18 tells us the seriousness of the booze being revived. It's a very serious matter. In verse 18 it says, Also day by day, so seven days, from the first day unto the last, he read in the book of the law of God, and they kept the feast seven days, and on the eighth day was a solemn assembly according unto the manner. I would say also that this is a picture of maybe our modern day family camps that we have where we go away to get away from the world and we have preaching every day and every night. If you haven't been to a family revival camp, I mean, it's a great experience. It's not youth camp, even though we have activities for the children. It's not a, a teen camp. It's a family revival camp. And ours will, hopefully we didn't have it this year, but next uh, year it's still being planned for starting Memorial Day for that that week. And we always have a great time with several churches in Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, and uh, even some in Arkansas come down. But anyway, we see the seriousness of the booths revive. It's a very solemn occasion. He said, I want a solemn 
convocation on day one, and I want a solemn convocation on day number seven or eight. And we want to keep people serious about doing what God says. Now, why is it so important to do this? Because they will forget what God did for them. This, after 400 years of captivity, now I often thought, where did they live under Pharaoh? Did they live in townhouses and apartments? Or how would all those people, hundreds of thousands or if not a million or two, how would they live for 400 years in Egypt? I don't know what they lived in, do you? Do you think they had mud and brick homes, you know, because Pharaoh liked them so much? They were under bondage for 400 years, so they wouldn't rise up and be like the Egyptians. They were hated for 400 years. So this story is here for us tonight, and we uh, should never forget when and where God brought us from. Right. We should never forget where God brought us from. We ought to take maybe a week, personally, and just live a very solemn, happy, make it a happy week. But we're so interrupted, aren't we? Well, God, I'd like to do that, but you just don't understand how busy I am. I mean, I'm doing your work, you know, and I'm having a nervous breakdown doing it, but yeah. And God says, that's why I have that day. So you will not forget why you're a Christian and not going to hell. So you won't forget the price that was paid on this cross up here behind me. So never forget when and where God brought us out from. And we're to celebrate our salvation often. Sometimes we forget we're even saved. We need to celebrate being saved as often as possible. Amen. I mean, it's, a lot of times that we have fellowships, it's a celebration, but we're not going to celebrate our salvation. We're going to celebrate something, but it's certainly not our salvation. I think somebody ought to start a new holiday just for Christians, at least one day a year, called Salvation Day. Amen. Somebody, if we were so old, we'd all start that, wouldn't we? Start a movement, just a Salvation Day. Not Salvation Army Day. Most of that's all works, you know. But uh, just celebrate being born again, saved people. I'm going to heaven, aren't you? Amen. That's good. And so we want to remember the story of the booths, how, how they could go for a thousand years and not physically get together and do what God told them to do in, uh, in the book of Leviticus. And how they got by with all that. How, how, now maybe they had some regional people try to do this, but overall, I mean, right now they're stuck in Jerusalem and Nehemiah saw the opportunity. Let's get this thing rolling. And so we do have modern Jews that celebrate this and a lot of Christians are thinking if they, almost using the Jews as a good luck charm. You know, if we do this, say these Hebrew words in, in our services that maybe God will like us more because we're doing what the Jews used to do, now, we want the Jews to do what we're doing, and that has come out of old, old Judaism. The old, what is it called? The old wine and new bottles. The new wine goes in new bottles, Jesus said. You don't drag the old covenant up into the new covenant. They, they don't mix. You'll, you'll, you'll have, that's why you have all the cults, because they'll drag verses out of the Old Testament and try to mix them with New Testament living and put everybody under bondage and they don't get anything done for Jesus Christ. Right. They just argue and fight and, and cause trouble and heartache. So remember the Feast of the Booths, the Sukkot tonight, and I don't know what day it will be next year, and if you want to mess with it, build you a, a lean-to in your backyard, just have at it. <laughs> Maybe a homeless guy you could help him celebrate. Bring, invite him over to move into your booth, okay? I told my wife, I said, I think if we could get some of these camps with booths like this and wrap, wrap them with uh, something clear, 
so they could see outside and people could see inside and it wouldn't be so tacky in the woods if you had a see-through shelter. Well, lo and behold, there's some guys on the uh, YouTube from maybe Russia, and they uh, they uh, they did that. They put went out and got logs and sticks and stuck them up like a teepee frame. Then they took this cellophane in a big roll and walked around and around and around and made him a door. And they they serve coffee and have a fire and a chimney and it's amazing stuff that people do. Well, that's quite a booth, I'd say. Yeah, but anyway, this is a good good short lesson for us tonight. So, Father, we thank you for our wonderful eternal life that makes us very glad and very happy. So help us this holiday season to not only celebrate the birth of Jesus, but also the payment on the cross for our wicked sins against him. So we ask you now to use this message in our hearts and in the hearts of those that will see it later. And we thank you for... The word being able to be spread all over the world through this little church now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As we stand and turn to page 287. 287. 287. Praise the Lord for the story of the, the booth. And remember our wonderful salvation that, that we have. Page 287. 287 again. 287. I surrender all. Great, great song. Oh, to Jesus. 